Yep, we're back on the road again. We're heading back out to San Diego, November 23rd, AKA Thanksgiving. So my flight is booked. I'm heading back out to San Diego on Thanksgiving day. This is more than a vacation. I plan on staying there for an extended kind of period of time. I didn't book a return flight yet. So it's kind of a big move for me. So I wanna stay out there for about a month. And I've mentioned this in my videos before. I just feel like it's, it's time for me. I don't wanna say, start like planning my future because things change very quickly, but I'm definitely looking to move out soon and I want to get an idea for what exactly I want to do. And I love it out there in San Diego. I also love New York City. So those would probably be the two choices of mine. And you know, I could, I'm in New York City all the time. Obviously it's hard for me to get out to San Diego. So I, I'm lucky that I'm set up where I have a friend out there that'll let me crash. So I'm gonna be staying at his apartment like I did last time I was out there. He has two roommates. My plan is really, you know, when I go on these like weekend vacations, whether it's like Austin or California last time or wherever with my friends, Boston, you know, we, we do it, we, we vacation while we're there. You know what I mean? Like we kind of party the entire weekend and we just like go out, have a good time, eat, drink, socialize, do whatever. I want to go out to San Diego for like an extended period of time, you know, three and a half, four weeks to see what it would be like lifestyle wise. Will I be able to enjoy my time out there? Will I be able to work? Will I be able to focus and all that kind of stuff? So that's the main goal of this of this trip because I wanna go out there for a month and then depending on how it goes, right? I wanted to get out of uh, New Jersey, out of my town, Emerson, for a while during the winter because you know it's depressing as shit. I work by myself, I'm not with, my friends are working or in school. It's not like I have people, I don't work with anybody. Since college, I've always had people to, you know, I'm like 25 years old so I'm young and I've always had people to socialize and meet new people and, and do other things between undergrad, uh, my master's, I've had multiple full-time jobs and stuff like that. So I'm always meeting new people my age, but now it's like I'm stuck here and it's gonna be like super depressing during the winter. If, you know, during the summer it's fine because I can at least go out and like drive around and kind of, you know, be outside and meet people elsewhere. But during the winter, right, I'm gonna be cooped up all day. It's gonna be dark most of the time because it gets dark at like five or six o'clock. So I'm like, I need to change. I need to kind of get out and go do my other thing. So I'm gonna go out to San Diego for a month. And when I come back for the holidays, I'll probably be back at least from like December 20th through New Year's. And I'll decide if I wanna go back out there with him. Maybe while I'm there, I'll look for either apartments or something I could rent for you know a month to month kind of period and hopefully it's not too expensive, but I might go back out there to finish off the entire rest of the winter, right? January, February, maybe come back here in March and really see what it's all about. So I'm excited to take that kind of that kind of leap. This will be my first time really like living on my own outside of college. I'm definitely worried about a few things. I'm, I mean, I'm worried about, I was thinking about this the other night, like the reason I haven't moved out yet is because I wanna make sure that I have all my finances in order and I wanna make sure that I'm, that I'm able to live comfortably and kind of with the lifestyle that I want before I move out, right? Like I know that I'll be able to do what I want and, and live how I want while having enough money to do so. But then I'm thinking about it, I'm like, you're never, the timing is never gonna be right on most things. You know, you, you'll find an excuse to tell yourself like, oh, I don't wanna move here, I don't wanna take this job yet, I don't wanna buy this, I don't wanna ask this person out to a date or whatever. You'll find a way that you tell yourself the timing is not right, and then next time, or once I get this, or once I do that, then I'll do it, right? That'll never be the case. So the more I think about it, the more I feel like I just need to kind of take this leap, move out, do my own thing, and I'll figure it out on the way. I've always been able to kind of be spontaneous and figure shit out on the way. I'm, I'm good at improvising, I'm good at just making things work, right? If I need to work a little harder to make sure that everything's good, I'll be able to do that. I, I have no doubt in that. And you know, I'm doing this because the only thing I don't want, the only, most of the decisions I make in my lifetime are based on regret. I do everything so that when I look back, I won't regret anything that I've done so far, right? And I implore you guys that are especially my age or younger, that now's the opportunity that you have with a lot less responsibility that you have when you're older to do things like this. You viewing this right now have opportunities that you probably turned down or thought about and wish you kind of did. And I don't know, I just implore you not to um, live with regrets. So if you're even thinking about something, if you think there's upside to it, if you think it would be a cool uh, change for you or something good can come from it, I really, really, really think you should just put your head down, say yes, and do it, and I bet you won't regret it. If it, comes, if it turns out to be a bust, you'll learn from the situation. Cliche as it is, like you only grow by failing, right? Anything you do, when you get somewhere and you fail, then you know not to take that road next time and you grow as a person, right? And that's that's just how life is, whether it's dating, whether it's other relationships, whether it's work-wise, whether it's fitness-wise, it really translates into every kind of point of life. I don't know, I'm just rambling, that's kind of how I feel. I'm really excited to make the move, but I'm definitely very, 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 very nervous. That's just really how I'm feeling on that.
So I'm sitting here, it's like Monday morning at about 10.40 a.m. and I have a call with one of my clients at 11, so in like 18 minutes. And I just kind of been prepping all morning for it, getting the reports ready and kind of every, every month I get on a call and we kind of go over like a month over month report just to let them know the flow of the campaign and see you know the improvements month over month to make sure that we're going in the right direction. So we have that now. Well, in 18 minutes. Now I'm just waiting here and I get super antsy. Like you can see, I'm, I'm, I started cleaning my shoes and I'm just like walking around kind of pacing, like kind of practicing what I'm gonna say to them. Whoa, why are we blurry here? I don't know, I always find myself doing that. I'm definitely a little nervous about the call. This client has been a little tougher for me to get results on than I originally anticipated because the other ones I've been working with are e-commerce. So it's more direct sales, purchases and stuff. And this one is more lead generation. It's more of a longer kind of sales process. But I guess I'm just nervous because because the results aren't really there yet because this is like a brand new company. Client is kind of just starting off with nothing. So they have no brand awareness. People don't really know about them. So a lot of the money you put into marketing upfront is to gain brand awareness and to help people figure out like what you're about, what you do, how you can help them and stuff like that. So a lot of companies don't like to spend money on on cold audiences, which are people that have no idea what your brand is or anything, but that's a big part of the marketing funnel and the sales funnel is getting people to know your company. And then once they do and they're comfortable with you, then you can hit them with kind of like a sales sales advertisements and things like that so that they are on board, they know you, and now they're ready to purchase. It's the same way it's like relationships, man. You're gonna walk up to a girl in a bookstore, say, hey, you wanna be my girlfriend? She's a cold audience. You gotta go up, talk to her, make her laugh, take her on a date, and then maybe down the line that could be that could be how it works. And that's the same thing with marketing and advertising. The way the marketing world works is you're basically figuring out where the attention is. And right now it's obviously on social media, it's not on TV commercials, it's not on billboards or anything like that. No one looks at that shit, everyone's on their phone 24 seven. You find out where the attention is and you find out where it's super underpriced, where people are going and where you can advertise to them for the lowest amount of money. And that's really why I've been getting, that's why I've gotten into the social media marketing because that's where the attention is and that's where it's underpriced. Yeah, so now see, I'm just rambling and getting nervous because I have to get on this call and I don't really know what else to do in the next 15 minutes. I'm probably just gonna chug my coffee, even though you can see I'm pretty awake and alive and ready to go. Hello? Hey, Brian, what's going on? It's Nick. Hey, man, how are you? I got you on speaker here with uh, my brother Eric. Another short video, like 50 seconds to a minute, but it doesn't need to be anywhere near the type of um, you know production value that you guys put into the first one. I'm talking about like you can lay the points out very quickly so that we hook yes. on the right people and within like the first three seconds, they know the value prop and they know exactly why they're here for the video and I think that would help build a more effective audience. Like, you know, Shopify. I was thinking about that too and I think um, we could definitely have worked. We try to drive traffic into our three different blog posts to kind of see which one of those is gonna work best mm -hmm. for creating an audience. Of yeah, course. So I'll be in touch real soon. Great talking to you guys. Okay, call went good. I realized I was a little nervous when it first started, so I think I need to prep a little better or just know what I'm gonna say off the bat when I'm talking about the reports and stuff. But otherwise, client's very satisfied. We're gonna roll, we're good to go. Another day, another call, another time to bowl. This is a call with that freelance company and I actually have to record everything because they pay by the hour. So when you're on a call with a client, you have to record it, upload it to them, so obviously they know you did it. So I downloaded this recording app, and I'm gonna take the call with my home phone, and hopefully this works. All right, so first problem. This company, they're a clothing company, men's clothing company, but they're based out of the UK. So phone number he gave me is like 40 digits long, and I don't know how to do it, because when I type it in, it just says there's an error. 447-890-772759. How do I even call that? So, dudes. It's Wednesday morning, it's around 7 a.m. I'm gonna hit the gym right now. I actually went to the gym last night, then I woke up today and I'm like, whatever, let's just hammer it out again because I have a lot of work to get done the rest of the day and I kind of want to bring you guys along for the entire day today, just do like a full day of, of everything from working out, work, eating, whatever it is I might do, so let's get it.
wanted to help out my family business, and my first career was helping my dad build his liquor store. Um, I launched an early e-commerce wine business, winelibrary.com. It was a hugely successful business in that space. I used email and Google AdWords and modern digital marketing to build that business. fooling around today I got the gym out of the way time to get into some work I wish you guys were like as into this as I am kicking off a campaign with a clothing company they are based out of London actually which is kind of interesting because well one I'm inside like the Facebook ad manager and everything they do inside there because they already have it set up basically and I'm just taking it over everything is in pounds like British pounds and obviously I have no idea how to convert that stuff so it should be kind of interesting figuring this out they're like a streetwear company basically but honestly targeting people like me they're like 18 to 28 males that wear, that are like into fashion, into style. I have to go through their entire campaign, what they've run so far. They've been running for a couple weeks now because they're not having that much success with it. So I'm diving in to see what they're doing wrong, whether it's the creatives, the copy, the ad copy. Creatives stand for like the images or the videos in an advertisement, but the copy is the text. So on Facebook, you can put text on top of the ad, a big bold phrase on the bottom of it, and then a little more text on the bottom. See what they're targeting, like if their demographics, the interests, behaviors, all these kind of granular things that you get inside Facebook. So I'm gonna be doing that probably for the next two hours or so. Another good thing is the fantasy football company I was working with, we renewed for another three months to push it through the end of the NFL season because originally we only had it scheduled through November because you know the season dips off and there's only a few weeks left once you hit December. Um, but I talked to them yesterday, I sent over the report and I, I asked if they wanted to get on a call this Friday, let's, you know, let's renew for another three months, which is great because they said yes, we're gonna get on a call to discuss Black Friday plans, we're gonna put together a campaign to push for Black Friday and uh, yeah, another three months is great because that will, that'll pretty much pay for my entire month out of California, in California. That's really the main goal here, right? Like I'm doing all this stuff, I want my freedom flexibility and I'm doing it so that I can afford the lifestyle I want. And that is a perfect example, right? Be able to pay for this kind of staycation that I'm taking out in Cali. So things are good, life is good. I need to eat something because I'm hungry as a mother. Me and Steve are doing the hot ones challenge on Friday. I'm terrified.
right, so it's like three hours later. I'm still working on the same campaign. I forgot how long, it takes forever to set up these campaigns. All the things I mentioned before, plus I had to analyze all the campaigns that they had already been running to see what had worked so far and what didn't work and what they were using. So it's taking me a lot longer than I expected, but also I'm not like, sometimes throughout it, if I need a break, I'll go on some of my like social media and I try to interact with every single person that sends me a tweet, uh, an email, a Facebook message, a YouTube comment. I was much better in the summer when I was doing it because I wasn't working with as many marketing clients at the time, but I still try to get around to it. It's really hard because on a given day, 50 to 100 YouTube comments, 10 to 15 tweets, maybe three to five emails, and then a couple random like Facebook. I'm constantly getting these engagement from my subscribers or followers or whatever it is. And you know, we're over a thousand Twitter followers. We're so close to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. We're slowly growing, but yeah, throughout the day, I'll just like go onto YouTube, see whatever other new comments are on and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes when I don't answer people, like I'll, I'll see the question or something. And if it's an easy question for me to answer, I'll hit it right back. Sometimes like people will hit me up like on Instagram, they'll DM me on Instagram. They'll see that I see it, right? Cause when you go into the chat, you could see whether or not someone looked at it and I'll see it and I won't respond and then they'll follow up like three times. And the only reason I don't answer right away is because it's like a question I need to look at in depth, right? I need to kind of do a little research on it and, and get back to them before I just blurt out an answer. So that's why if you ever DM me or I don't answer after you already see that I looked at it, it's because I don't feel comfortable just answering off after like two seconds of reading it because I need to do a little more research, but I always try to get back to you. So keep that in mind. I'll probably be done with this in the next 20 to 30 minutes, I think. I need to start prepping for the weekly fantasy video I put out. I'll probably finish the notes for it tonight, film it tomorrow morning. And uh, I also have to start editing. Like throughout the week, I'll edit the clips for my, v like this video. I have like 20 to 30 clips throughout the week. And sometimes I'll edit them like day by day, or I'll just like plug it in, do like edit the first three clips that I did that day. Or sometimes I'll, I'll leave all like 20 or 30 for Friday. I'll edit it and then upload it for it to be published Saturday. So, I mean, there's always random shit for me to do, right? Like I consider all that working between marketing, YouTube, interacting, doing my notes for everything. It's, oh, it's a lot. So. Oh, I gotta go until it's early in the morning. All right, so I need a break. I'm gonna go uh, grocery shopping. So we have nothing to eat. I wanna make dinner. I've just been like snacking throughout the day. I ate like three apples, a half of a turkey sandwich. I downloaded this app or this software called Flux. It basically makes your screen like orange and it's just good for your eyes when you're staring at a screen all day like me. I'm gonna go to the grocery store now and then finish the notes for video tomorrow. I look like I'm dying. I look like I haven't slept. I've been on a crack binge for like the last like 48 hours. I kinda have, I guess. But this is kind of a typical Wednesday in the life. It's not glamorous, it ain't flashy, right? You work hard during the weeks. You gotta work on the weekends, you do the damn thing. But otherwise, you know, we go out, we work hard, we play hard. You know, gotta eat. Ar, 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 ar. All right, let's go get some goddamn food. is to hold other bags. I got a big bag like on my stairs that we put all our plastic bags and there's like a hundred of them in this. Who would have thought? Bag for bags. These uh, Dan and Greek yogurts, 80 calories, 12 grams of protein. Great macros there, some ketchup, some more ketchup. Love me some ketchup. Egg beaters, some Diet Cola, never drink your calories. Lexus tequila, we had to get some fruit. Got some rolls to make sandwiches. We got some ham. Put on those sandwiches. Love ham. Gotta get that shit sliced very thin though. I picked up some some sushi. So I haven't really eaten today. Don't knock stop and shop sushi till you try it. Spicy crab rolls. We out here. We out here, crab people. I'll see you, Mr. Krabs. Then I got diced up onions. I always buy these diced up onions. I think I like onions probably more than 97% of people on earth. I throw them in when I'm making eggs. I throw a bunch of these little chopped up onions in the middle of it. I'm making sandwiches. When I'm, when I'm making anything, I throw onions on it. I got some Power Zero. I got a couple cases of water in the back of my trunk. I don't feel like bringing that shit in right now. That's the grocery haul. It is 6.45 and it's time to get back to work. My mom always gets so mad when I get diet soda. You see me hide it in the back there because I don't want her to see. Every time I go, I'm like, I'm going to get groceries. She's like, don't buy diet soda. Like she thinks it's the worst thing in the world for you. I'm like, mom, 
I feel like you need to come out with me one weekend. Like if you see some of the things that, that go on on the weekend, you wouldn't be hassling me about goddamn diet soda. I'm young, I'm healthy, I'm in shape. Let me drink some pop. Let me drink some diet pop, some Zero Cal pop, mom. All right, get off my ass. It's Thursday evening. Got done with the haircut. Getting mentally prepared for the Hot Ones Challenge tomorrow with Steve. I'm scared as hell. I think last clip was the food clip. Some of that chicken I was showing y'all. Ham on a Sammy. Some Thousand Island sauce. Onions. Diet pop. That's really like how I eat, to be honest with you. I'm not really health conscious anymore. I just make sure I get a lot of protein. I try to keep the calories on the lower side. That's going to wrap up this video, because the next video is going to be the Hot Ones video. So stay tuned for that. That might be a video by itself. I don't know yet. If you enjoyed, thumb it up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Me and Mr. Sombrero will be back next Saturday. Peace.